Hi everybody and welcome to our next edition of the GA Museum Book Club. My name is Julianne and I'm delighted to be joined today uh, for a bit of a different book club because it's a children's book today and the author of the book King Henry is Paul O'Flynn who's here with me. You probably recognise Paul from the telly. Um, uh, so I'm delighted to be having a chat about uh, this really good and kind of um, unusual style of a book. So looking forward to hearing uh, what Paul has to tell us about how he wrote it and uh, what he learned and I suppose about Henry himself as well. So you're very welcome Paul. Thanks for joining us. Thanks Julianne. Great to be here. Um, thanks for doing this. Uh, I really enjoyed this. I was just telling you that I actually read it with um, my six year old son, Leo. So we went through this. We did a chapter a night there for a couple of weeks. We really liked it. Um, I suppose it's maybe aimed at older kids to read themselves, but it's also a book that you could read to younger kids, particularly those who like sports. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, it's it kind of a seven to twelve is what we kind of say is the the, the catch. But actually, a lot of a lot of my friends have read it with their um, with their kind of smaller kids as well. Done it in the way you did with Leo, and uh, and I'm dying to hear how we got on the 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 readers. The children are the harshest critics, so you know, aren't they, Joe? Yeah, he has a few questions, but we'll go back to the beginning first, I suppose. If you want to tell us a little bit about yourself uh, first, and then we'll talk a bit about the book. Yeah, well, I'm. Paul O'Flynn, I'm from uh, Dublin, uh, not 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 a hurling stronghold when when I was younger, um, and I work for RT Sport. I'm a I'm a sports journalist, there, a reporter, uh, have been for I guess the guts about 18 years now, and I've uh, travelled all around the world. Really had some great experiences there to Olympic Games and Rugby World yeah. Cups, and uh, you know All Ireland Finals and all the rest in the mix. So uh, yeah, I have uh, in some ways the dream job, which is uh, you know getting paid to go around and uh, and watch sport. Uh, which which I love, I have a huge passion for. And then in, in, in kind of recent years, I've started uh, writing this series of, of children's books, the Irish Sporting Legends with uh, Gil Books. Uh, the first one we did was about Johnny Sexton uh, and, uh, you know, went down really well. So then we uh, we were looking for, for the next one to do and, and who better than the, the, the legend Henry Sheffman, King Henry. Absolutely. And how did the original one with about Johnny Sexton come about? Well, um, it was just an idea I had really the... Um, there's a lot of books on the market um, called Ultimate Football Heroes, which a, a lot of people, young kids, will be familiar with. Uh, and they're about most of the, the kind of soccer stars that, that we all know and watch, um, Messi and Ronaldo and yeah. Mbappe and Salah and all of those. And they're, they're really popular with young kids. And, and, and I had seen a few of them. Uh, and I just thought, wouldn't it be lovely to have um, stories like that for about our own Irish sports stars, yeah. you know, for Irish kids to just read about uh, these stars that aren't on the television, but they, you know, they're actually they grew up in the towns they're from. They they went to the same schools and the same kind of sports clubs that they did growing up, and to show them, I suppose that you know, it's not just about being an international superstar, but you can be be a, you know an, an Irish sports star too. So um, that was the idea. We we chatted to Gil Books, and 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 they they liked it and and wanted to go ahead. So. Um, we come up with a few ideas of, of 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 who we might like to to cover. You know, we really wanted to to go for some of the top sports stars. I guess that 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 Irish kids would know and and love watching them uh, perform. Uh, so we started with Johnny Sexton, and, and and Johnny came aboard, and he was he was happy for us to to write a story. Uh, and then this 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 one now, King Henry, uh, with uh, Henry Shefflin's story. So yeah, so it's nice. So hopefully there'll be there'll be more to come too. But uh, for the moment, it's it's Johnny and Henry. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, and I suppose I'm a big Harlan fan in particular um, and I actually don't know a whole lot about Henry Shefflin. He's quite a kind of an enigma in a lot of ways. He wouldn't have done a whole lot of interviews, you know, when he was playing. And I, I know a lot of players don't, but him in particular, particularly because he was so successful. Um, was it hard to, or how did you approach him? Or like, I'm nearly surprised that he did it. I'm obviously glad he did. But um, how did you get him on board? Yeah, it was interesting when, when we first spoke he actually he really loved the idea like he warmed to it straight away and i i think it just appealed to i i think the fact that he has young kids yeah self i think was was really key it was similar with johnny as well like they understand i think that you know this the market and this is what um you know what we're trying to do and we're working with uh, dyslexia ireland as well you know to, yeah. to, to have the books are written in a style um to appeal to reluctant readers so that was something that appealed to henry as well uh, and uh, yeah, he was happy just to for us to to kind of progress the idea and and, and go through it. So you know, the the fun for me was kind of getting into his his, his childhood. A lot of the books are about like the, the sports stars growing up and, yeah. and his life kind of growing up in Ballyhale and, and and starting out in St Patrick's National School there. He had a great teacher, Joe Dunphy, who um you know taught uh, taught him I think more about hurling than he did about English, Irish, and maths. You know, yeah. uh, such a hurling kind of stronghold and and just this kind of family life growing up. But I I just loved getting into 
into those stories. A lot of the book is, is, is it's based, I mean, it is, it's fact, it's a factual story of Henry, but it, it's a little bit kind of fictionalized as well. It's kind of imagined scenario. So that's the fun for me to be able to kind of interpret that and, and get into the mind of a, a seven, eight, nine year old uh, Henry Sheffield grown up in yeah. Ballyhale and, and playing for his school team, playing for, for his club Ballyhale. And, you know, I like I was, I was sports mad young boy i was i was more into it in terms of kind of reading and uh watching it on on, on tv yeah. i wasn't particularly talented i played everything uh but I, I wasn't particularly good um so it's lovely for me to just have that kind of get back into that mindset of when i was a a, a young fellow with a, with a ball for a brain i think and uh, and, and just kind of think what kind of story we'd, we'd like to do so henry was really supportive really positive and i'm, I'm delighted to say he was really happy with the, the the story as it turned out and, and his, his his kids have read it now as well and uh, i think he got he got a good kick out of that the fact that that they've read it and were able to read about his uh exploits on the pitch as well yeah because they probably didn't even realize in a way how successful and famous he is they're just he's just the dad i suppose to them yeah. so for any kids your dad is just your dad <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah yeah i think he got yeah. a bit of slagging all right like his eldest definitely gave him a, a little bit of slagging about some of it too so yeah, yeah it's good fun. um and how did you go about it did you do a series of interviews with henry we actually largely just took his story like from from biographically you know um okay and kind of went through stuff and then when he I when has I, it, there is a biography of henry a yeah, yeah exactly and it's really just his kind of life story as, as it went along and then, and then as i said like a lot of the the interactions and stories in it are kind of fictionalized by me based on the the events of his life and then once you get a, about, about 10 chapters in it kind of explodes into his hurling career and it's very much kind of Roy of the Rover style then uh, yeah. you know, blow by blow of his, his matches and kind of uh, the nice thing is you know for me as a sports journalist we go to all these events and we, we get a lot of access and we, we chat to a lot of sports stars but really what's in the dressing room is sacrosanct you know no sports star is ever going to tell you uh, what actually goes on in the dressing room the conversations they have the the, the rows and the arguments uh, and all the stuff that the, the managers say to them as well so for me I love the, the fun of that getting inside the dressing room wall because again going back to when I was a kid that's what you want like what's it really like to be uh, on the pitch on an honor and a final day what are the players saying to each other what's Frank Cody saying to Henry Sheffield yeah. in the dressing room beforehand so uh, you know it was great fun to be able to kind of go through those conversations and and, and imagine the the team talks and the chats and what the players are saying to each other as as, as they go through um as well you know and then at the end of the process we we, we sent the, the story to Henry and we had a bit of back and forth on, on a few things, you know, and then, and then kind of tweaked and fine tuned it, you know, to get to the, the completed book. Yeah, it's, it's really good. And uh, when we were reading it, I suppose kids love reading about other kids. So we really enjoyed kind of the chapters that you're talking about in the school. And I thought it was good as well. Like he didn't always like he didn't just go from being the best player when he was young and it wasn't plain sailing. So I think that was a nice lesson in the book, because I know with kids books, there always has to be kind of a lesson or a moral or the ideally there should be. So I thought that was important. Did you consider that when you were writing it? Yeah, I, I think it's actually really important. I was surprised now, I have to say, because like when you look at Henry's career from the outside, he, he was 19, I think, when he played for Clickhead in the yeah. first one in Ireland, he was 20. He, went, like, it, he looked like he was one of those, you know, those annoying guys you go to school with <laughs> or play their team who was just yeah. bored from the first minute he picked up for Hurl and, and just everything was easy for him. But actually, when you dig down into the story and, and, and you find out he actually had a lot of struggles, particularly kind of in his teenage years. And yeah, he didn't. Um, he certainly wouldn't have been profiled as one of those guys who was going to be the superstar um, that he was, and 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 he he had um, quite a lot of setbacks along the way. And I think that was one of the the really good things for for writing a children's book. You know, is is that for children to realise that uh, you know talent is is obviously really important, and if you want to make it in anything in life, but particularly in the sporting world, you have to have the talent, but you have to work really hard as well. And I think that was a key thing. That was that shone through it's actually very similar in, in johnny's johnny sexton's book as well you know that i think it's more well known that johnny sexton struggled a little bit you know, earlier yeah. in his life but henry you know he had um he had a lot of setbacks in school like he, he went to st Kieran's college in, in yeah. penny which is the famous hurling school but he wasn't on the school team uh in kind of second third year he, he dropped off uh later on as well uh, he had a few injuries and things like that too and just how he kind of dealt with that and how he broke through, um, got over the, the setbacks and he kind of just over one summer just sort of exploded. He went from minor to, yeah. went on to the senior team really just in, in one great leap and and how he sort of dealt with that. But then also when he broke through, um, he, he got a little bit, you know, by his own admission, he got a little bit kind of cocky, a little bit arrogant and maybe thought this was easy. And 
he sort of stopped doing the work. He was eating the wrong food. He was yeah. you know, maybe going out a little bit and not, not living the way, a, 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 you know, a top sports person should live. Uh, and he got, you know, read the riot act by Brian Cody and he, he sort of copped on and came around and, and that helped him an awful lot too. And I think as the book goes on, that, that sort of theme of struggle is there, even though on the outside looking in, you know, we all see Henry just winning all Ireland after all Ireland, yeah. also after all star. And we think it's all plain sailing, but there was times in his, his personal life, he struggled a little bit with, you know, his, his job, his career, he lost a bit of love for hurling at one stage. And then he had these really big setbacks uh, through injury as well, a, a bad eye injury. And, and then the, the, as we all know, the, the couple of really bad knee injuries too. And just how he worked so hard all the time. It was all about the work really. He had the talent clearly, but I think yeah. for children that is the, the really great message is just that, that you, you won't get anything in life really, especially in sports without working hard. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot I didn't know, and it's funny, um, you, sometimes maybe in a children's book you can get straight to the point and tell the story very clearly, so maybe we learn more sometimes from kids' books. Um, talk to me a little bit about the reluctant reader and the style of writing and how difficult that is, because I, I know sometimes writing in that style can, can be more, um, I suppose, difficult than big flourishing long words and meandering sentences, so how did you go about that? Yeah, well, we wanted to work with um, Dyslexia Ireland. I mean, that was kind of the original I, I, idea of the of the series as well. And um, one in ten people in Ireland um, are dyslexic. Um, wow. so it means like in any school classroom, you like three, two, At three, least, four yeah. children uh, will have dyslexia. So it's something that's a lot more common than than people may think. Uh, and also, it's important, I think, for for the children themselves to understand that. Uh, there's not anything wrong with them. They're not slow or anything like that. It's just that their their brain works a little bit. They learn bit differently, different. yeah. It's like, I think to explain to other people, it's like if, you know, if you're really bad at art, you know, and someone makes you draw every day, it, it's going to really kind of annoy you. And if you're if you're not good at reading uh, and someone's kind of in school, of course, you're kind of, you have to read, it, it's really difficult. So the research has shown that, that, that children actually uh, with dyslexia will actually, will read and will get used to reading and enjoy reading if they have material that they like, you know, and I think that to, my childhood, we just didn't have that kind of array of, of children's books that are, yeah. are out. Uh, and the key with these stories really is just the idea was, I guess, to, to appeal to young sports fans um, who may not like reading, but when they're inspired by the story of their sporting hero, like if there's a young boy or girl in Kilkenny who loves hurling, loves Henry Shefflin, um, they might actually stick with it and, and, and kind of and read it. Um, so that was the kind of the idea behind it. Then the actual writing of it, um, there's just got there's guidelines from the Sexy Association. A lot of it is 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 down to how it's kind of presented on the page, the font, the spacing, wow. uh, so that it's kind of clear. But from my perspective, writing it, it's it's kind of short, sharp sentences, very clear. Um, not to be too technical, but no sub clauses, you know, just active short yeah. sentences. Um, but in some respects, for me, it came quite naturally because when we write for broadcast, like when you're a broadcast journalist, you write very short, clear. I was sentences. actually going to say that to you, yeah. Anyway, yeah, like we, you know. Uh, we often say like if someone's watching the six o'clock news that you know we think they're paying all their attention to it but they're not they're having their dinner they're ah, looking, giving yeah, out to the kids yeah. playing with the kids you know doing something else they only have a half an eye on it and if, if your sentences if you're writing is is, is too uh complicated you've lost the message you know so so for broadcast writing you have to write very clearly uh so i think in some respects for me i mean there's things i had to change but in some respects that that came quite naturally to me as well to keep keep it kind of simple but we went through it then with them um, you know, with with Gil Books and and we, yeah. you know, a great editor, you know, who who kind of clears all that up as well. And you know, it's just it's about keeping the idea, you know, having not not introducing too many ideas at the same time that the story is clear. If if this paragraph is is about Henry, you know, scoring a goal, that's what it's about. You're not introducing like back references or, or full yeah. references. It just keep it really simple, really straight to the point, and that the sentences are short and sharp, and then how it's presented on the page as well. Oh, that's interesting. And did you have? any test readers like as you were going along or any young people that were helping you or giving you ideas well one of the nicest things for me we didn't actually as it went along but like when when johnny's book came out first and and then when, when king henry was published was just to get feedback from children themselves and parents yeah. and, and you know it was the nicest thing i got a, a letter from one mother who said uh the boy in galway actually who said it was the first time he sat down and read a book wow. start to finish all by himself you know uh, and that for me was really special like that, oh, that that's that amazing was feedback. Right, you know and and we got like several of those messages you know so like that's that's just you know it's, it's just so nice to hear you know henry was Brilliant. delighted that too it's like that that's the whole point of, of the stories it's just to inspire um young people to 
who love sport, I guess, to, to also discover the joy of reading. And I think the research shows if, if children with dyslexia or who are reluctant reading, if they get into reading when they're younger, they'll actually go on and read for, for their whole lives, you know, even though they will remain dyslexic, but they actually yeah. they overcome the obstacle that, they, they, you know, they'll, they'll go and enjoy it. So, so that's the idea of the series, really. That's brilliant. That's brilliant feedback. And um, you talk about that age group seven to twelve. There isn't that many, I suppose, books. It's a funny age. You've got the old, like the Roald Dahls and the Enid Blytons from, you know, when we were growing up. Um, but there's not that many. And then there's not that many Irish books. So the fact, you know, that this is about hurling or about Johnny Sexton and the Irish rugby team, uh, like I think it's really important because it's a big part of, say, my family life, for example. You know, we're, we're hurling every Saturday morning. We're watching matches on a Sunday. We're going to matches. Matters. Um, so I think you know it's brilliant, and the hurling in Ballyhale is really interesting to me as well. Like it's just such a part of of life there. Like he wasn't going to be anything but a hurler, I suppose. Yeah, it does. I mean that that like that came as a surprise to me too. I said I, I'm from Dublin. Now my dad was from Cork uh, when I was younger, so I was interested in hurling. But like when I when I played Gaelic when I was younger, we had, would have had in Dublin about forty kids playing. On our under 12, 13, 14 team, and we couldn't even get 15 out for hurling, you know. <laughs> so yeah. I love playing hurling, but it just wasn't a big deal in a Dublin. Thing, yeah. Anyway, um, but so for me to read about Henry's life, I mean, he's practically born with a hurl in his yeah. hand. Yeah, his yeah. family was steeped in hurling, like his dad, like his, his mother actually played camogie as well. Um, his brothers before him all, all played like to, to, to quite a high level as well with, with the club and, and, and some for Kilkenny. Um, and just that, yeah, just absolutely steeped in it. And they had the family pub in um, in Valley Hale as well, like chefs. And, and, that, and that was um, a big part of Henry's childhood, like that he was always working there, even when he was small, you know, collecting glasses and things and just all the talk in the bar all the time was about hurling. And he said he just loved that, you know, they was just sort of just absorbing that knowledge that the, the, the game lasts for 70 minutes, but actually for the entire night afterwards, everyone dissects it and chats about it. And, yeah. You know, bits and the performances and, you know, just that kind of being seeped in it then. And within the national school too, you know, and like the, just like the history, of it, like the Fenleys from there, like the, the list goes on. I mean, beyond Henry, the TJ Reid. DJ Reed, you know, then was coming like, and DJ before him. Like it's just endless. Isn't exactly. It? <laughs> it's endless. Like it's just a hot bed. But it's amazing when you have a culture in a place like that, you know, it just shows like it's, I mean, clearly the talent there. They're obviously good athletes in the genes, you know, but uh, I think it's so much about culture, isn't it? And, and, and just so much. There's, there's no other sport. He played a bit of soccer, actually, which was a surprise to me, too. He's a big Arsenal fan. Uh, oh, and I, I, he was he was quite good. I think he he he, he played like a pretty senior, pretty kind of high level, you know. Um, but uh, but there was no way he was ever going to get away with no. that. You know? <laughs> it was actually eye opening to me because I'm from Offaly and obviously would have followed the Offaly hurlers and the Galway hurlers a bit. Um, like, but there, no wonder Kilkenny are so successful, you know. And that's just one of their lives we're only seeing. I I thought it was really interesting. You got you like you would have to be trained at a very high standard to to compete with that. You can see why he is so good now or was so good. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it was great. Um, what's next? Are, are are you going to write more children's books or any other ideas on on the pipeline? Yeah, we're we're hoping that this the series has been a great success. As I said, like we've we've really got great feedback from from parents and and, and children as well. So we are planning to write uh, a couple more. I mean, there's so many amazing Irish sports. Oh yeah, I'd love to to cover. Like I'd, I'd love to write Katie Taylor, Kelly Harrington, Rachel yeah. Blackmore. You know, just a host of. GA stars, more rugby stars, football, you know what I mean? So it's like the list is kind of endless, you know, so yeah, just up to, it's just a matter of kind of getting some of them over the line or whatever. But um, but we definitely plan to write a, write a couple more. Hopefully maybe next year there might be a, another one coming out. All things going well. But um, but yeah, that's so that's that'll keep me busy. You know, I'm yeah. too. <laughs> it's about finding the time, you know. Yeah, it's fair, fair play, but fitting this in along with a day job and a family and everything else that goes with life. So, yeah, well, we'll definitely have you back if there's any more books coming. I think they're brilliant. Um, great, as you say, for kids who love reading and also importantly for those who don't. So congratulations on it and thanks for taking part. We will maybe have an in-person event maybe after the summer. I think it'd be lovely to do something in here in the museum and we could even get some young readers in to ask you some questions. So hopefully we can do that in the future. But for now, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we hope to see you soon. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Julian. I'd love to do that. Yeah, we'll chat soon. Thanks a million.